we're going to begin the process. Now, uh, when I realized that people had given me some feedback on these and wanted to see a video, I said, you know what, let me check out YouTube, see what's on there. Oh my goodness. Um, the recipes that are on there are pretty scary and they miss the most important cooking process for these burgers. <clears throat> I'll explain that to you once we go along. I forgot to mention your sheet pan needs to be 17 by 11. Don't hate me. I apologize, but it needs to be 17 by 11 in order to make the recipe work. If you're going to use a smaller pan because that's all you have, then you're going to need to cut back on the meat and that just changes the recipe. Okay. Or you can do it with a smaller pan, but just know your burgers are going to come out a little thicker. Okay. So you're going to need some parchment paper to put on top here and you just want to get it in there as best as you can have it overlapping on the on the ends like you see here and you're going to put the meat in a bowl now i use 80 20 because that is to me the most flavorful juicy type of meat and what i do is i put i simply put the meat in here very simple and then i some pepper not much I'll give you the exact measurements as always. Some salt, not as much as you think. It looks like it's a lot, but it's not. Then we're gonna put in some beef broth. I do this by eye, but I will definitely give you the right measurements. And I'll tell you why I do it by eye, because it's hard to tell exactly how much your meat, like, you know, your meat may be maybe, I don't know, a day or two fresher than what I'm using. So. You may need to use more, I may need to use less, so it's, it's difficult. The basis, though, that I've always used is a half a cup. Um, and if I have to go back in there and, and get it more um, liquefied, I just keep adding in. So I start little by little, and I know by eye how it's supposed to look. So you're just going to m simply mush it in this way. And this is another reason why I tell you to use gloves, because you seriously are going to be touching and handling this meat so much that even if you're serving your family, you just, you're not going to feel right if you're going in there with bare hands. So if you can see here, it's in a spreadable consistency. Okay. You want it to be easily spreadable where it's not going to break. So that's enough for me. I'm not going to put any more in there. Now, some of the things, let me make something clear. Some of the recipes you're going to find online are ludicrous, absolutely insane. You have people telling you to add an onion soup mix, uh, don't do it doesn't belong in there this is what it, the way it's supposed to be made trust me I've tried it in some of the ways listed just because I was curious don't do it another thing that I've seen is people adding in a tablespoon of peanut butter but for what I know that sometimes people tend to add in crazy things to make it seem more secret or their their touch and the people who are adding in peanut butter to the meat they were adding in a pound and a half of meat so it's like a tablespoon of peanut butter is is not even going to matter in a pound and a half of meat it's it's a useless ingredient and then i've also seen dehydrated beef i don't even know where one would even purchase dehydrated beef it sounds disgusting to put inside of a burger recipe and someone else also suggested a jar of baby food beef my daughter who, when she was an infant, when they lacked taste buds, didn't even want to eat that. I can't even imagine an adult wanting to mix that in with a burger. So a lot of the recipes you'll see online as well, they use a pound and a half of meat, and then the and burgers end up coming, you know, this thick, about a half an inch. White Castle burgers aren't that thick. They're, they're almost paper thin, okay? So you're going to want to go with three quarter pounds of meat. Obviously, this recipe makes 12. So if you need more than that, you double the recipe, triple the recipe. So let's go on with the most important step here. So we have it to that little mushy consistency. I start off by mushing it here with my hands just to get it as kind of uniform as possible. You want to get it into like a rectangle shape, okay? So this is not something that <laughs> I'm generally used to doing. Like obviously I only do this method for burgers when I want them to have a uh, the look, taste, and texture of White Castle Burger. So in the best way I can, so this is a little tricky. I'll show you that it's, it's a little tricky. In the best way I can, I do it in, for, in the form of a rectangle shape, okay? So for me, the hardest part about the recipe is just really shaping it out. If you want to shape it out to like the, the length, I mean, sorry, the width of the pan and the length, okay? So 
slowly and gently you're going to roll. Gentle. Don't, don't be rough. Okay? No need to be rough here. So you're going to gently roll just back and forth. Now see how perfectly my rolling pin fits in there? Again, if you don't have a rolling pin that's non-wood, you don't have to go out and buy one for this recipe. You can do it with your hands. It just takes a much longer time. So we'll gently start rolling back and forth until it starts getting longer and wider. And then you'll start seeing it loses its shape. Don't worry about that, we can fix that. We will fix it. As I've gotten it as far out as I can with the rolling pin for now, did you see how it almost broke? We're gonna put this back here. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm going to gently, as best as I can, I'm going to press the meat out little by little, okay? It's literally just nudging it very slowly, not pulling, not pressing hard. And then if you like, see, this could happen if you're like, you know, you get that little hole. Don't worry, just mush it over. There you go. You're not going to notice. This is going to go in the freezer, so it's not like you're going to mess it up right now. <clears throat> so I'm just going to keep rolling it out here until it gets to the size that I need it to be. See how it's breaking here? Just mush it, push some in this way. There you go, done. So now here it's like uneven, right? So I'm trying to get it to be more even. So again, I'm just pressing it toward like a little ripple, like the ocean. And I'm pressing it until it gets here. Right here. And we're just making like little visible lines. They don't have to be very you know, perfect. You just want them to be visible to your eye, and I'll explain why. It's very important to do these lines first, um, because the next step that follows is the reason why they come out like White Castle cheeseburger. <laughs> take the straw you're going to just put it in the meat and go and move in a circle just like this okay if you notice White Castle burgers they have five holes in the middle and that's because of the steaming process where that's right you heard me correctly these are steamed they're not broiled they're not baked they're not fried they're steamed that's the next step I'm not even going to explain it to you right now so you continue doing that in between every square okay I'm gonna save the boring part now once you get all your square your holes in each square you're going to put this in the freezer and you're gonna keep it in the freezer until you feel it firm but not frozen and then after that I'll show you the next step it's easy peasy after this this was the most difficult part everything else is golden they would look like this and they're easily able to be pulled off of the parchment paper okay if you didn't freeze them overnight and only freeze them for an hour they're still going to be pliable it'll just you have to be a little more careful with them so the next step that you're going to take is the steaming process that's the process i was talking about before and that's the only way that they should be cooked and what you're going to do is you're going to put in the mixture of beef broth i always as usual give you the um correct measurements oops my cube didn't fully um dissolve so let me take those out, and that's okay, um, because I don't want it to be too salty, so I don't mind that all of it didn't um, dissolve properly. So what we're going to do now is, if you can see, I feel like I need more of the chopped onion, so I just want all of the surface to be covered by them, and if you're like one of those people who don't really like a lot of onion, then you know you don't have to put them in. All right, so this is what you're going to do. Now, obviously, I can pick mine up this way and just transfer it, because it's frozen, but when when you um, only do it for an hour, you're gonna have to like carefully flip it over. So that's what you would have to do is carefully flip it over that way, you know. And I'm showing you that I didn't have to do it that way, but I'm just showing you so that you can see the process that you have to take. So now, all you're gonna do now is you're gonna put it in the oven 400 degrees, and you're not gonna touch it. Don't open up the door. You don't want to release any of the steam. Just leave it and um, you can see through your little oven window when they start turning brown. So seven to 10 minutes, depending upon your oven. 
So I just took them out of the oven. I know they don't look very appetizing. I promise you, they are delicious. You see here, they look like they've shrunk. Don't get nervous, that's what they're supposed to do. So now you take your thinly sliced deli cheese and you just layer it over. So you see now how you're doing this? You know, that's why I said, don't worry if it looks like you have, um, if they've shrunk so much because that's the way they're supposed to look. So I'm only gonna put pickles on the on this section right here. So continue topping them this way. See exactly 12. What did I tell you? Told you to trust me. So now what we're doing is we're putting them back in the oven for about I don't know five minutes, no longer than that. So, this is what they look like. I told you they'd be easy. Anyone could follow the directions. Just keep the ingredients simple. That's the way they're supposed to be. They're not overly seasoned or anything, and you're going to love them. They made exactly 12, and uh, trust me, when you try it, you'll never make them another way again, and you'll probably be addicted to them. So, if you liked the video, and you tried the recipe, and it was delicious, of course, share it, subscribe, and click like. Thanks for watching. Bye.